Hey Retro fans, welcome to another episode of Retro Gaming Memories. Um, in this episode I'm going to look at 10 of my favourite Amstrad games. Um, as you know if you've watched any of my previous videos, the Amstrad was the first computer that I owned. Uh, my mum and dad got me it for Christmas in 1985 I think it was. Um, and I loved it and it was it's always seen as a kind of outsider in the, the whole kind of C64 Spectrum Amstrad thing. Um, each machine has their own merits obviously looking at it sensibly you know um, but the Amstrad for me was was my machine you know I, I always protected it um, because because I was the Amstrad guy. I had friends who had Commodore 64s and Spectrums and Amstrads you know that uh, we used to go over to each other's house and play on the different machines sometimes having a little bit of a kind of jibe at what the games were like um, you know on, on other systems and sometimes I would come away thinking that that, that looks better on whatever system than, than my version but you know at the end of the day I had an Amstrad and I loved it and I was very grateful to my parents for getting me it um, and I still have an Amstrad to this day uh, which I still love and play on a, a fairly regular occasion. Um, so anyway, that all being said, I've got a little kind of smattering of games just off camera here and they are the kind of 10 games that I could go to at any point, you know, that have got either good nostalgia for me or are cracking games or basically they're my favourites for, for various reasons. Now they're not the top 10 best Amstrad games ever, you know, that's that list's completely subjective. These are just games that I could basically pick up at any time and play and that's usually how I base my favourite lists, you know, my top three things or top five, it's something that I could do at any point. So, you know, my top films are films that I could watch at any point in time and still enjoy, even though I've seen them 30, 40 times. Um, you know, same with video games. The The top games that I have are games that I could just pick up and play at any point in time and still enjoy playing them. Um, and some of that is based in nostalgia for the game, but most of it, kind of having a little look at the list here, apart from a couple, a couple of you might disagree with, but most of them are, are cracking games. So anyway, that all being said, let's kind of crack on and have a little look at the games. Now these are in no particular order. Um, you know, I don't have a, a hierarchy ranking to number one favourite game all time. These are just 10 of my favourite games in no particular order. So we will pick the first one that's sitting here in front of the camera and that is The Mighty Operation Wolf. One of my favourite games ever. This is signed by the late great Bob Wakelin. Um, and I've got the, where is it, it's up there. No it's not, it's over there. <laughs> I can see honest. The Operation Wolf print that Bob also signed. Uh, first time I ever met Bob down at Replay. We had a big long chat about the Operation Wolf artwork. You know, I kind of went into nerd overload and started spouting how it was my favourite artwork on the games and all that kind of stuff. So, and that kind of triggered a bit of a friendship between Bob and I, which was which I was very uh, honoured and fortunate to have. Um, so, yeah, so Miss Bob, you know, he's he's left a, a, a brilliant legacy. Um, so anyway, yes, Operation Wolf, the Amstrad version of this is fantastic. Um, when I was a kid, you know, and, and didn't really know any better, I was like, this is arcade perfect, you know, and obviously it's not. But it's it's a bloody good conversion. The graphics are amazing. Um, and I'm not going to do the usual for an Amstrad game. The graphics are amazing, you know, on that on, this, on the Amstrad system. It plays really well. Some of the sound like, is lacking a little bit. Um, you know, the in-game machine gun noise is a little bit like a rapid-fire pea shooter, but... Um, the gameplay is all there. Um, I think all the levels are there. Can't quite remember. It's been a while since I've played it, but um, it's an amazing conversion. And you know, I've I've got a lot of nostalgia for this because I, I got it on Christmas Eve. Um, I might have told this story before, but we used to go out on Christmas Eve um, for for lunch somewhere. And uh, this this year, so what was that? 1986, 87, I think. Can't quite remember. Um, but we, we were in a place called Leisureland up in the uh, bridges in Edinburgh um, and it was a, a sort of cafe with an arcade and fruit machines and all that kind of stuff and 
we went up there and I'd been playing the arcade machines, you know, playing Robocop and Outrun and all the kind of Shinobi, all the all the crackers. And uh, and we had had our had our lunch and I remember having chicken curry and chips. It's bizarre how you can remember all this bizarre stuff. And uh, and anyway, so it was it was about three o'clock in the afternoon by the time we had kind of were ready to wrap up and go home. And uh, and my mum surprised me and just gave me a gave me ten pounds and says, "Go and run down to the shops and buy yourself a game for Christmas." So I got on the the bus at high speed because at this point, you know, the the shops were going to be closing early for for Christmas. You know, they didn't stay open till midnight on Christmas Eve back then. Um, so I rushed down to the shops. Um, and I think I'm pretty sure it was Virgin. Virgin and HMV were next door to each other in, in Edinburgh, and I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it was Virgin I got this from. I can't quite remember. Um, but I ran in, threw my 999 at the guy, and uh, and came home with Operation Wolf. And I sat on the bus and kept that in its bag because my usual routine for games was to you know get on the bus to go home and open them all up and look at the tapes and sniff the instructions and read the instructions and just look at the artwork and the screenshots and just build up this huge anticipation for the game for, for getting home but I didn't do that with Operation Wolf because it was a Christmas present and I wanted it to be fresh on Christmas morning um, so and it was and and you know when I got it on Christmas morning it was I was really excited to play it because I absolutely loved the Operation Move arcade machine, um, and you know I, I wasn't disappointed when I loaded it up, fantastic the music great you know it's got a bit of the intro the the intro stuff uh, and the loading screen and all that kind of thing, um, and it just felt like the arcade machine, um, utterly brilliant and I loved it so, so it remains one of my favourite. 8-bit conversions, I still love it on my main cabinet, I've got a light gun and all that kind of stuff that I play it with. Um, absolutely brilliant. I had it on the Amiga and all that kind of stuff uh, later on, which I don't think was as good a conversion as it could have been, but anyway, the Amstrad version, absolutely loved it. Um, so yeah. Okay, next up um, is Kane, a Mastertronic 199 budget release. Um, I bought this based on the artwork. Um, I absolutely love that artwork, and it's quite gruesome. The, <laughs> the guy who's been shot's got a bit of his hand missing. I don't know if you can pick that up on camera. Um, it's maybe not going to focus, but yeah, he's got a bit of his hand missing, which is kind of really gruesome. Anyway, I, I bought Kane um, based on the artwork, which, to be honest, the artwork sold a lot of games to me as a kid. You know, when they had them laying out in the shelves. Um, it was really exciting and I, and I loved, you know, uh, I think I got this from Boots and they had all the games, you know, stacked up on their side like that. So you'd have a little look and you'd pull it out and you'd have a look at the artwork and you'd think, well, that looks quite good. What's this, a cowboy game, whatever. And then, you know, you'd flick it open, you'd, well, the tape wouldn't be in it, but you'd have a look at the screenshots and, and then you'd kind of decide whether to part with your hard-earned pocket money. Um, and I did for for Kane and, and I got it home and, and loved it because it's... It's such a cool... It's basically a set of mini-games when you think about it. Um, if you haven't played Kane, go and play it immediately. It's, it's brilliant um, on any system. Well, I haven't played the Spectrum version. The Commodore 64 and the Amstrad version are very similar. Um, so I'm not sure what the Spectrum version's like. I'm sure it'll be cracking. But um, but yeah, it's a set of, essentially a set of mini-games. Um, you start off and you've got to shoot birds with a bow and arrow. Um, which sounds horrible because, you know, I'll, I love birds, I feed birds in the garden and all that kind of stuff and I'd never hurt one, but for the premise of the game, um, you know, you shoot birds with a bow and arrow and all that kind of stuff and it gets you coins, I think, I can't quite remember, but then you, <clears throat> there's a next level on the horse, there's a level on a horse anyway, travelling to the town and then you get to the town and uh, there's guys, bad guys popping up, it's a little bit Operation Wolfie, it's more like Cabal actually. Your guy runs about in the bottom left, uh, the bottom, the screen left and right, and you've got to shoot guys that pop up at windows and on roofs and all that kind of stuff. You move across here about, um, so all these kind of cracking little mini games, um, and yeah, I just, I just loved it. The graphics are, are, are good for a budget game. I was going to say they're, they're functional. You know, they're, they're pretty good, <coughs> and uh, yeah, it just, it just all works. I think it's a great little game or series of games, whatever way you want to look at it. Um, and you know, great value for one ninety nine. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend that game to anybody. Um, great, great fun. 
So next up, uh, let's see, <clears throat> we shall have a little bit of martial arts action. Way of the Exploding Fist, an absolute corker, and mine is signed by David Rowe, the artist. Um, I met him at Replay as well, and I have a, a nice framed print of the, the artwork from that. Um, yeah, Exploding Fist. Like most 80s kids, I, I loved martial arts back in the day. Um, I did Shotokan Karate and various other martial arts throughout my, my teenage years. Um, so to play fighting games, uh, you know, I love I loved fighting games in the arcade, um, like Karate Champ and all that kind of stuff. Um, but Exploding Fist kind of took that one-on-one -on -one Karate Champ type fighting, but it, it felt more like a simulation. And, and remember, this is a kind of 10-year-old brain that thinks like this. But the, the, the array of moves you could do, is it 16 moves I think it is or something like that? 18 moves. Um, you know, the different joystick combinations to do roundhouse kicks or front kicks, side kicks, sweeps, punches, lunge punches, all sorts of good things. Um, the graphics look great um, on all the systems and uh, and it's just such a good slugfest. You can, you know, it's really pleasing when you just walk up and smack somebody in the face and <laughs> knock them out, which sounds really violent. You know, I'm not really a violent guy, but... Um, but it's it's a satisfying game, and I think if it didn't have that satisfying element, it wouldn't be as good as it is. Um, but sometimes, you know, when when your opponents get a little bit better, they start blocking, and it becomes a real strategy sort of fight. You know, you've got to think about what you're doing, and you've got to be quick. So just like in a real karate fight, you know, and, and if you were in a, a tournament or whatever, um, you know, if you, if you went to kick somebody and they blocked it, you'd, you'd have to counter with a punch or something. So you, you do the same kind of thing and explode in fist. Um, and, it, and it gets a real kind of test of, of reflexes and, and kind of knowledge of the moves to be able to, you know, get out of the way of sweeps and counter with a lunge punch or whatever you're going to do. Um, so I used to sit and play that for hours. It was a staple, you know, resident in my cassette deck on my Amstrad for, for, uh, for many years. Uh, absolutely loved it and, and still do and like I say I could play that you know uh, any day of the week it's fantastic so next up uh, we'll continue with the martial arts theme uh, and another little budget gem and that is Ninja by uh, well it's Entertainment USA but Mastertronic basically um, now this this was a cracking game again I absolutely loved the artwork um, Totally over the top ninja craziness, but uh, but so so good. Um, I can't remember. I think it was either one ninety nine or two ninety nine, but a little budget game. And uh, it's, it's I think it's loosely based on sort of is it karate or karate kia whatever the, the Apple two kind of game. Um, sort of side scrolling uh, flick screen fight your opponents you know and uh, and that's as far as I ever took it I've no idea what the premise of the game actually is and what you have to do to complete it um, because I never got that far in it but it was always great fun when you did you know you'd walk into a room and there'd be little karate guys and you could just have a fight with them and, and do away with them and that was great sometimes you had weapons I think you start with a limited supply of shuriken which you can hit them with um, but the great thing is if you miss or whatever you can pick them up and some guys have got weapons, and if you fight them, they sometimes drop weapons that you can pick up and replenish your shurikens and stuff. Um, so it's it's a cracking little kind of slugfest adventure thing. Um, and you can jump through holes in the ceiling. You know, you've got this astronomically high jump, which is crazy, which is playing to that a little bit to the, the sort of supernatural uh, mythology of, of ninjas and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, it's, it's quite a fast-paced game. It's, it's great fun. Um, the graphics are, are are pretty sweet as well, um, and it's 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 just jolly good fun, which is what video games should be, isn't it? Um, so yeah, again, one of my my pick up and play. I could just pick that up anytime. Um, so great, great fun. Um, okay, let's move on to Grizor. Um known as Contra in the US, I think. Um, I always knew it as Grizor. I never ever played it in arcade um, until laterally when I had a main cabinet. Um, and I prefer the Amstrad version. Um, I think the Amstrad is probably the best looking out of the, the, the three uh, home computer versions. The C64 is quite nice. The 
a spectrum takes a little bit of a different kind of view the, the characters are a bit chunkier but I think the graphics on the Amstrad version are, are astounding and it's got great music as well the, uh, great music great sound effects the guns sound really chunky you know especially when you get like the rapid fire it's a like tum, 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 gun sound and lasers and all sorts of good stuff um nice variety of games you've got obviously the whole side scrolling shooty thing with multi layers and multi levels that you have to jump to and um, some of it's a little bit timing and things like that so good action kind of um, with a little bit of kind of platforming element in it um, and then it kind of moves to the pseudo 3D kind of into the screen type maze thing before you get to the, the, the sort of big cannon screen where you have to shoot loads of stuff um, so lots of shooting lots of runny gunny stuff um, just great great fun um, and it's just a brilliant game uh, yeah, there's not much else you can say. You did, you did get a free demo of Combat School, which was pretty cool. Um, although I had Combat Combat School before I bought Grizer, um, but it was quite nice when you used to get things like that. You know, demos of games on the the back of the the thing. Um, and again, nice Bob Wakelin artwork there, classic Bob Wakelin artwork. And uh, yeah, lots of uh, you've got Arnold Schwarzenegger from Commando there, and. Uh, What's his name? Sylvester Stallone, and that's obviously based on the Alien. So, um, yeah, he took his his influences, but you know, made it his own and uh, made created the artwork that we all know and love. Um, so yeah, Grizor. Um, what else can we move on to? Let's see. Um, Ghostbusters. Uh, absolutely brilliant fun. Um, I think everybody that had an 8-bit computer had Ghostbusters, surely. First played it on my pal's Commodore 64, um, which was a great version of it. Um, you know, obviously great music with a SID chip and uh, quite a lot of speech synthesis in it, which, which was, you know, that blew my mind at the time. Because Amstrad really didn't do speech synthesis, I can't even say it, speech synthesis that much. Um, it does say Ghostbusters on the Amstrad version. But it doesn't say like he slimed me and all that kind of stuff like the Commodore 64 version. It was really the the Oliver twins that started really utilizing speech synthesis synthesis for God's sake, um, and their their kind of Codemasters type titles. That's when I first really heard lots of speech stuff going on. But Ghostbusters, everybody knows Ghostbusters. Surely, hopefully, um, just had a really nice feeling of the game. The whole map thing with the ghosts coming in and trying to figure out where Zool was and all that kind of stuff bores me slightly but the the driving to the th to the, the haunted house and then doing the whole uh you know trying to trap the ghost thing um is is great fun and although that's all you're doing you know it's just rinse wash and repeat um it's it's just great fun and and you felt like you were one of the ghostbusters um never ever completed that never got to the final stage with a stay puff guy um yeah always ran out of time or, or got bored or something whatever but um yeah it's a game that i enjoy going back and playing and just having a little go you know um not brilliant at it like i say i've never completed it but i enjoy you know busting ghosts who doesn't so yeah um right let's think um something totally random amsoft's fruit machine uh, one of the free games that you got in the 12 pack with the, the Amstrad um, and th this was basically I think the first game that I actually played the first game we loaded uh, on the Amstrad when I got it I remember Christmas morning you know my mum and dad had managed to set the Amstrad up and load up the welcome tape that's the sort of demo from the welcome tape <clears throat> which was astounding in itself because you know my dad was an engineer and a very clever guy but my mum and dad had no idea about computers, neither did I. You know, there weren't any computers or video games or anything like that. So for them to, you know, read through the manual and, and suss out enough to be able to load a tape was quite a feat. Um, but I looked at the 12 pack with huge excitement, you know, and bearing, the, the, bearing in mind this would be like, you know, half four or five o'clock in the morning. Um, I kind of knew I was getting an Amstrad because I'd walked in on them kind of trying to hide it. Um, so I was really hyper excited anyway, but when I got all these games, 
um, you know, Harry had attacked Roland on the ropes and all these kind of 12-pack games that you got with Armstrad. Um, we were looking through them and, and my mum and dad were saying, well, you know, have a look, let's see what it can do. So um, we were looking for a game and I thought, well, my mum and dad both loved playing fruit machines. Um, so I thought, right, I'm going to have the rest of my days to play with this. Let's load up fruit machine and give it a go. And do you know what? To this day, it's still one of my favourite fruit machine games. Now, I don't play fruit machines. I prefer arcade games. But, you know, occasionally I like having a little dibble with the, the, the fruit machine type games. But this this has got everything you ever need in it. It's got all great sound effects. It's got uh, gambles and nudges and holds and... Uh, what else? Winner spinners and and oh Christ knows what. There's loads of different features in it, which makes it really good. It's not just a, a three bar kind of you know roll thing and, and match three lines type thing. It's got a lot of features in it, um, and it just makes it great fun to play. Um, and if you got the magic, the the aim of the game was to get three sevens, and you got five pounds in rewards if you got a, if you got three sevens, and the screen went nuts. Um, it just made this big mad noise and everything flashed and went crazy it would throw you into an epileptic fit it was brilliant um, but yeah we, we, we sat and played that and had a little shot I think you, you get I think you get a fiver to play you get five pounds to play and it's ten pence a shot so every time you hit the space bar to roll the things it's it's uh, it's 10p a go <coughs> excuse me but it's it's great fun and it's like I say I've tried various other fruit machine simulator games on the, the Amstrad you know I went through a little spell and I, I played the, the Formula One shut up the Codemasters one um, and there was a Mastertronic Super Nudge something and they were pretty good but for me you can't beat that fruit machine on the Amstrad brilliant um, okay let's think now uh, let's go for more shooty action absolute astounding classic that I think everybody should have Exelon um, by Houston Consultants I think it was the first game of theirs that I actually played first played it on a Spectrum and the Spectrum version blew me away it was absolutely amazing Spectrum 48k um, it was so smooth and the animation of the, the guy, you know, he's kind of jet, his jetpack, his, his backpack thing kind of wobbles and he, lots of different bits of animation on the main character. Um, and he just looked brilliant. And although the enemies were coloured balls and just very simple things, the sort of puzzle element to each screen, you know, it led you in perfectly. You, you know, you, you have to shoot the bad guys and blow things up on the first couple of screens. So straight away you know how to use your rockets and your guns to shoot the stuff and what kind of thing's going to happen. And it just progresses and gets rapidly harder. You know, they introduce new puzzles with double height rocket launchers that you you have to suss out that you can you have to walk up to it to kind of switch them off and things. But, you know, um, and then teleporters and all sorts of things to get you different guns. And it's... It's such a great game because you just learn as you're playing it and, and, and the difficulty is just perfect. Um, and the Amstrad version looks beautiful. The graphics in it are just lovely. Um, and it's, you know, it's comparable with the Spectrum, I think. Um, slightly more colours. Um, I don't think it slows down, really. There's there's maybe a couple of little bits of slow down when you... There's little kind of... I always think they look like the gumball machines. It's a little tall pillar with this sort of bowl on top of it and when you shoot that well when you hit with your grenades all these red balls come out and it can slow down a little bit there where there's loads of sprites on screen but um but generally it's still a, a thoroughly playable game and, and like i say the amstrad version looks beautiful um i think it was Raphael jekyll that did the the conversion i may be wrong but whoever did it was a was a programming genius um and yeah, it's it's still up there, obviously in my my top ten, um, and I'd happily play it on the the, the Spectrum or the the Amstrad. I've never played the C sixty four version, um, so I can't say you know I can't put my my tuppence worth in on that. I have played the the Amiga version, and the Amiga version's terrible, um, compared to the Amstrad version. It's just no, just stop it. Play the eight bit version, uh, Specky on Amstrad because the the Amiga version's not very good at all. Um, so yeah, anyway, there we go. Um, so, penultimate uh, game in this list is Renegade. 
Um, now I first played this, I didn't have this version as a kid, I played it on the, what was it called, We Are The Champions uh, compilation, which was a brilliant compilation of games with Barbarian and things like that and Championship Sprint and whatnot. but Renegade, I had never played it before. <clears throat> And I got it home and I thought, you know, it shows great promise because the artwork's got somebody kicking somebody in the face. My kind of game, you know, I mean, I like that kind of stuff. And I loved beat -em up brawlers in the arcade, you know, um, Final Fight and all that kind of stuff. So this, when I loaded this up and saw that's what it was, I thought brilliant. And the uh, control scheme that they, they had for it, it, it put a lot of people off. Um, because I'm pretty sure it was a joystick and three buttons um, on the the keyboard and a lot of people didn't like that because there was a lot of people just like playing with joystick <coughs> but it meant it gave you a good variety of uh, of moves you know and, and options to try and pull off the moves because you could punch you could kick you could do jump kicks jump back kicks all that kind of stuff um, and it had sort of double dragon type stuff in it where you could punch the guy and while they were stunned you could kind of grab them and knee them in the bollocks and stuff like that. And if they were on the deck, you know, if you had knocked them down, you could kneel on top of them and punch them a few times in the face. It was great. Um, but it was such a great game and it was kind of three screen, sort of flick screen. So you started off essentially in the middle screen and if you went to one side... You were at the edge of a kind of railway or subway platform, and you could, if you timed it right, you could kick the guys off. So instead of getting into a slugfest, you could just kick them off into the uh, off the railway edge, and, and they died, and that was great. So you had a limited number of people to sort of take out. It was probably about eight or ten, I think. But they followed you about the screen, and the other side of the screen had a wall up against it, and you had to do go up there to kind of beat the bad guy. But the boss was watching as you were taking all these folk out, and folk had you know sticks and chains and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it was a, just a good slugfest, a good kind of brawler, um, and a little bit of strategy, you know, like I say, kicking people and to sort of stun them and then deciding how to take them out or just to try and stun them and while you dispatch somebody else. And, um, and it was it was just great and great sort of rock and roll type blues tune uh, for for the intro music on the Amstrad, um, which plays throughout, if I remember correctly, um, and the graphics were just amazing they, they just look beautiful um it's based on an arcade game uh which i didn't know until years later um the arcade game the the, the character has has kind of a white sort of it's more like a, a tai chi or kung fu kind of outfit on um as opposed to the sort of jeans and you know waistband uh, waistband waist coat thing that your character's got on the cover um but it's a it's a great great game and uh, I remember the I'm pretty sure the blood when you kill when you kill somebody basically when you knock them down the blood is now it's either blue or green I can't quite remember um, but that's because they changed that from red um, because the game came out just after the Hungerford massacre in the UK and you know violence and sensitivities were were high understandably so they thought it would be a little bit more appropriate that it wasn't you, you know, killing killing folk um, with red blood and all that kind of stuff. There was a key press cheat, <coughs> excuse me, that you could use um, to make the blood red again. Uh, I, I can't remember what it is, but it, it just plays perfectly as it is. I mean, that the colour of the, the blood doesn't matter. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great game and... Uh, worth buying either standalone or as part of one of the, the many, many compilations that appeared on it. It was one of the, the kind of big hits for, for Imagine, so, or Ocean, but, <clears throat> but yeah. So, now on to my, the, the last game, and to be honest, it would be a big toss-up between this and Operation Wolf for my favourite Amstrad game, um, and that is Bruce Lee. Um, absolutely love this game, and I never ever wanted the game which sounds really stupid um i got birthday money when i was whatever 11 or whatever it was i can't remember um i'd got some birthday money <clears throat> and i'd been looking through amtex magazine which is the game the the magazine that i used to get back in the day um and uh yeah i'd been looking at the new games that were coming out and i'd seen this this game uh year kung fu 
And uh, <clears throat> Year Kung Fu looked like my kind of thing. Again, I didn't know it was based on an arcade game, but it looked it looked brilliant. Um, you know, one on one fighting, various stages, guys with weapons and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, brilliant, that looked cracking. So I remember I wasn't well. Um, I either had the cold or something, some whatever it was. I can't remember. <clears throat> And I was feeling kind of under the weather and a little bit sorry for myself and, and bored that I was stuck in the house and all my friends were out playing. So my dad had said that he was going up into the town, into Edinburgh, for, for whatever. I don't know if he was just going up for a little wander or if he was going in to try and get me something to cheer me up, whatever. I, I, I don't know. Um, but he says, do you want me to get you anything? And I says, well, if, if I give you my birthday money, could you get me this game, Year Kung Fu? And he wrote it down the title. Um, because that was a double whammy because my dad didn't know anything about computer games and he didn't know anything about martial arts either. Um, so to try and pronounce Yi Ar Kung Fu would have been, you know, crazy for him. So he wrote it down, I remember writing it down and off he went. And uh, <clears throat> he went into the town and, and I was kind of sitting expectantly for what seemed like an eternity. Um, he wasn't gone that long. My dad used to go up the town exactly where he was going, get whatever he needed, get on the bus and come straight back home again. So he wouldn't have been away that long. You know, it was probably like an hour, but to a kid waiting on a game, that's an eternity. And uh, <coughs> when he came home and he said, he says, I went into John Menzies to try and get your game. John Menzies was the kind of main place to go. <coughs> and he says, but they were sold out. Sold out of Yar Kung Fu. It was the kind of big hit of the post Christmas or Christmas, because my birthday's in it in January. So it was you know either the Christmas rush or or just post Christmas. So bless him, he went for John Menzies into Boots and then tried HMV and Virgin, all the places that he thought might have computer games, and ended up going back to John Menzies and saying, "Look, I've tried everywhere. They've not got it. You know, my son really wanted this game, and whatever sales assistant spoke to him said, "Well, we've got this game, Bruce Lee." If he likes martial arts, you know, he might like Bruce Lee. And of course, Bruce Lee, one of my heroes, absolutely adored Bruce Lee. Um, you know, Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan are just the, the best guys out there on the planet. But, uh, yeah, so so they had recommended Bruce Lee. So it was the same price, uh, $8.95, well, $9.95 it would have been. Uh, <coughs> so my dad picked that up. So he came home and he says, look, I didn't manage to get your game, but I got you this instead. And I was like, all right, thanks. I thought I've never heard of Bruce Lee the game, and uh, you know I liked the I liked the cover art. But when you were when I was a kid, and you know it's, it's a really shitty thing to be thinking. With, but I thought, oh, that's not really the one I wanted. But you know, but I'm glad that he got me it because you know look, I mean looking at the screens and stuff like that, I was like, oh, I, don't, I don't know. It was wasn't it a one on one fighting game like I wanted, um, which makes me sound like an, an ungrateful, spoiled little shit, but I wasn't, I promise. Uh, <laughs> um, but anyway, I, I loaded up Bruce Lee and uh, and instantly loved it. The theme tune was brilliant. I can still hum it to this day, you know, I still remember how it, how it went. Um, and such a good game. I mean, it's obviously classic platforming action with a little bit of kind of martial arts loosely thrown in. Um, but it was one of the first games I ever completed. I discovered a cheat on it and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's one of the things you can go and get 99 lives. Um, but I loved all sorts of things about it. You know, you, there's little platforms that when you run over them, you get this kind of fountain thing. I don't know if it's supposed to be fire or whatever. Um, so you run over it and there's a, a tiny little delay and then you get this fountain of death. So I loved, you know, having... Uh, Yamo or, or was he called Butchu in the, the C64? Can't remember, but he was called Yamo, the green guy. He was called Yamo on the Amstrad version. <clears throat> and anyway, you would you would run and have them chasing you, and you know you'd run over and then laugh hysterically as this, you know, fiery death kind of came up and, and consumed them. Or even better, you'd run past the thing and stop and let them come and then just punch them back into it as it triggered. You know that 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 gave me hours of entertainment. Um, which is really quite sad, but great game. And there's there's uh, the famous room with all the lasers in it that you've got to jump over, and it's just that it's you've, your timing's got to be perfect. God, I lost so many lives doing that. And the thing is, you lost your lives, and it wasn't like you want to continue. It was like no, back to the beginning. And there's there's twenty six screens, and I think it is in in uh, Bruce Lee twenty six something like that. Yeah. I'm just looking. 19. God, I thought it was 26. 19 screens of excitement. 
um, which is nothing when you think about it. But that kept me going for hours and hours and hours. And eventually when I got to the big old evil wizard guy out to try and beat, um, uh, it, it was just such a huge sense of accomplishment. And uh, and it's funny because now you can run through the whole game in 15 minutes. But, you know, as a kid, it really tuned my, my reflexes. And, oh, it was just utterly brilliant. Um, so yeah, and it, and it still remains, like I say, I'd be hard pushed between that and Operation Wolf for my, my favourite Amstrad game ever. Um, the C64 version of Bruce Lee is also fantastic, obviously. Um, the two are very, very similar. Uh, usually if you look at a screenshot, the only way I can tell them apart is the font on the Amstrad is different for the, the, the score font is different for the, the C64 version. Um, the Spectrum version is slightly different, um, graphics aren't quite as good in my opinion, but um, it's still a great game to play on any system. I've never played it on the Atari, I think it was originally written for like the Atari 800 um, home computer, I've never played it on that, that was obviously the, the, the best, I presume the best version because that's what it was written for, but the Amstrad and C64 versions are, are spectacular, you know, regardless. Um, so yeah, it's uh, that that is my top ten list of awesome games for the Amstrad. Um, I'd love to know what you guys think of these choices, and uh, you know what are your top ten games? What 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 stuff do you love on the Amstrad? And some people love games that are just that some people would consider terrible, um, but it's it's a very subjective thing. And I like finding curveballs. I like people that that have kind of odd choices that you you would never think was a great game, like Fruit Machine, for example. You know, I was going for a laugh, Chuck and Bridget is one of my favourite games. Um, it's not, but uh, people detest that game, absolutely detest it. It was one of the free games that you got with Amstrad. And uh, and I used to actually say, I've got a bit of a soft spot for it. It takes ages to load and it looks kind of nice. The graphics, you know, they try to do a lot with the graphics. Um, but I used to sit and play that and, you know, it gets your brain going. I think people don't like it because they can't play it, but it really gets your brain going. Um, it's like one of these games where you have to rub your tummy and pack your heat at the same time, you know. Um, you have to really kind of think about what you're doing. But it's it's not a terrible game, you know. It would be in the camp with E.T. And, and things like that where people think it's the worst game of all time and it's not. You know, you just need to sit and play it. But... So things like that. What what are your favourite games, especially if you've got curveball games that aren't aren't the kind of main ones, uh, you know? Um, so yeah, let let me know in the comments or do a little video response or whatever. Make sure you tag me so I can see it. Um, but let me know what what you think. What your your favourite Amstrad games are, and uh, and I'll maybe do some some other sort of top ten lists of of various other systems. Uh, in the up and coming videos so yeah thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this um trip down memory lane <laughs> and uh and yeah let me know what you think what you what you enjoyed on the amstrad and uh and i shall speak to you next time